Hitting you with a little bit of 411 regarding the Global Wrestling Network. This is BQ when I do this for the Global Force Wrestling fans. Well, how about instead of focusing on those yahoos, you focus yourself on Eli Drake. Good old Ed Norholm appears on the Wrestling Observer Radio. Are you calling me a liar? He gives us a little bit more information regarding the Global Wrestling Network. Now, I personally, as a fan, was very happy with a little bit of information that he did give us because I feel like... The company's vision for the network is very similar to the vision that I had hoped that they had for it. Oh, okay. The Global um, Wrestling Network is supposed to be out next week, and I'm speaking you today, speaking to you today, excuse me, on the 8th of September, 2017. Global Wrestling Network is going to feature an estimated 3,000 hours of content from their library with 800 hours already ready to go when they launch the service. They are hoping, and this is something that I had said and a lot of people had said too, they are hoping to add content from other promotions such as NOAA, AAA, and The Crash. This is a selling point that I think is really going to make the Global Wrestling Network successful. Why do I say this? There's a lot of people out there who subscribe to the WWE Network that aren't necessarily a fan of the current product, but they like the old WWF stuff or the WCW stuff, or the ECW stuff. So when I was subscribing to the network, I know I kept it a lot longer than I initially intended because I enjoyed watching the 80s stuff. So basically with this TNA library, you're going to be able to get subscribers who may not be a fan of the current Global Force Wrestling product, but they might want to see the Asylum Years, or they might want to see just you know content from the very beginning of the company. They might want to see that old AJ style stuff or or whatever it is. So there's some people who are fans back then who aren't fans right now. This could be an attractive product to them for that reason. There might be people who are just big fans of Lucha Libre, big fans of Japanese wrestling, and they can get that with the Global Wrestling Network. So you see where I'm going with this. It expands the opportunity and the possibility for people who may not be huge fans of the current product to um to want to go ahead and download the app so the service is supposed to be out next week and i'm speaking to you today on the 8th of september 2017 just to make that clear so it's supposed to be out next week they're looking at doing roku and apple tv which i think are great as well streaming services any kind of streaming service is really positive i'm not i'm not gonna lie i'm not super familiar with roku and apple tv but i do have a fire stick so i would imagine that they're in the same ballpark. It's supposed to go for $7.99 a month, and there's going to be a 30-day trial period. A lot of people were saying when they watched the little bit of information they were dropping on TV, oh, well, it's a free app. It's a free network. Maybe because I have a business background, I could read between the lines a little bit, and I'm sure many of you could as well. I didn't think it was going to be a free product. I felt that they were promoting free episodes of Impact, but that it was going to be a paid paid network. And sure enough, in North, North America, they're going to be adding to the free tier app 10 days after it airs on TV, episodes of Impact. So after it airs on Pop, 10 days later, there are going to be episodes in the free tier app. But it is a $7.99 app. I had said I thought $6.99 was a good price point for it. I was hoping they weren't going to go up to the $9.99. I don't think that would have been a smart idea. But I think $7.99 is pretty decent. I can work with that. And just to give you guys an example, and I'm being conservative here. At least I hope I'm being conservative. Let's say 20,000 people download this thing by um, by the end of the year. Okay, And I think it's, I think it's very conservative because if you look at you know pay-per-view numbers and people are buying 50 $50 pay-per-views. I would imagine a pay-per-view is going to be on the app. Would not make sense for it not to be. But let's say 20,000 people get it at $7.99. In a year's time, time frame, so 12 months, that is a gross, not a net, but a gross income of almost $2 million a year. So once you start getting up to that 30000 40, 50000 I think they're going to start seeing some really good revenue and it's going to be a consistent stream of revenue. And that's something that's extremely important with all this. So I hope you guys are excited for the network. I know I'm very excited for it. I don't have too much 
interest in the old library because I've said several times before, when people kind of leave the company, they kind of become dead to me. And there's going to be some people I support, some people I'm a fan of. But the, one of the big reasons I'm just not really big into the old stuff is because a lot of those people who do leave the company don't really haven't really wanted much to do with it after leaving. And I don't really want to celebrate certain people. I'm more invested in the current product and seeing this product grow. But if they're able to get that crash Noah AAA stuff on there, that thing's going to be killer. So I would imagine they're going to have to roll some punches early on. And um, it may be a little difficult to navigate at first. But I think it's going to be a huge thing for the company. And I think it's going to be the thing that keeps them ultimately going forward in the future. I had a long day today, folks. I know I had a little bit problem speaking today. Thanks for rolling with rolling with me, though. And I want to know what you guys think with the little information we've received so far. And I want to know if you plan on subscribing to the network. This is BQ. Please subscribe to the channel. We're talking Global Force Wrestling just about every day. And stay up. Talk to you soon.